Hello everyone. Welcome to another interesting video by Simply Learn. In this video, we are going to discuss one of the major topics that drive the decision making, that is analysis of variance. We'll begin this video by discussing what is ANOVA and what are its types. Then we will move on to discuss some key terminologies to get a clear understanding of ANOVA. Then we'll discuss the concept behind the working of ANOVA. After that, we'll understand the term F statistics and an example to understand how ANOVA is really used. So let's get started. But before we begin, if you love watching tech videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. So what is analysis of variance? ANOVA is to test the differences among the means of the population by examining the amount of variation within each sample related to the amount of variation between the samples. This technique was invented by R. A. Fisher and is thus often referred to as the Fisher's ANOVA. Analyzing the variance tests the hypothesis that the means of two or more populations are equal. In a regression study, analysts used the ANOVA test to determine the impact of independent variable onto the dependent variable. So, what are its types? There are basically two types of ANOVA, which is a one-way ANOVA and a two-way ANOVA. When we are comparing more than three groups based on one factor variable, then it is said to be a one-way analysis of variance. For example, if we want to compare whether or not mean output of three workers is the same based on the working hours of the three workers, we'll use a one-way ANOVA. Now let's move on to two-way ANOVA. When factor variables are more than two, then it is said to be a two-way analysis of variance. For example, based on working conditions and working hours, we can compare whether or not the mean output of three workers is the same. Now let's discuss some key terminologies used in ANOVA. We'll start with the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the assumption that the event will not occur. A null hypothesis has no bearing on the study's outcome unless it is rejected. Alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is the logical opposite of the null hypothesis. The acceptance of the alternative hypothesis follows the rejection of the null hypothesis. H1 is the symbol for it. P-value. In statistics, the p-value, also called probability value, is the probability measure of finding the observed or more extreme results when the null hypothesis of a given statistical test is true. The p-value is a primary value used to quantify the statistical significance of the result of a hypothesis test. Now let's move on to alpha value. The alpha value is a criteria for determining whether test statistics is statistically significant or not. This test provides a p-value which is the probability of observing results as extreme as those in the data, assuming the results are truly due to chance alone. An alpha value of 5% or lower is often considered to be statistically significant. Now let's try to understand this terminology by taking an example. Let's assume that a new drug is developed with the goal of lowering the blood pressure more than the existing drug. So in this case, a null hypothesis will be that the new drug doesn't lower the blood pressure more than the existing drug. The alternative hypothesis will be that a new drug does significantly lower the blood pressure more than the existing drug. And the p-value will be the result from evidence like medical trials showing the positive results which will reject the null hypothesis. The S statistic will be the extent of difference between the means of different medical trials. The sum of squares will be the variation from the mean of different medical trials. And the mean will be the average of all the results from evidence like medical trials. Now let's understand the core concept between how the ANOVA works. The one-way ANOVA compares the means between the groups you are interested in and determines whether any of those means are statistically significant different from each other. Specifically, it tests the null hypothesis. If any of the group means is significantly different from the overall mean, then the null hypothesis in this case will be rejected. Now let's discuss the term F statistics, which is very much used in the analysis of variance. F statistics or F ratio is a statistical measure that tells us about the extent of difference between the means of different samples. Lower the F ratio, the closer are the samples to the means. If you have three different data sets, then this part will be the within group variance, that is the variance between the samples. This line will be the variance between the means of the different samples, which is also called between group variance. If the between group variance is large relative to the within group variance, 
the f statistic will be comparatively large to the critical value and therefore will be statistically significant. Now that we have covered almost all the theory regarding the ANOVA, let's try to understand how this is used in a real world example. Suppose you are a marketing manager of the product company. Your team has recently launched three new advertisements and you want to know if the three different types of advertisements affect mean sales differently. So how can you do that? You will use each type of advertisements at 20 different stores for one month and then measure the total sales of each store for a month. To observe if there's statistically significant differences in the mean sales between these three types of advertisements, we will conduct a one-way ANOVA. For calculating the ANOVA, you will use the type of advertisement as a factor and the sales as a response variable. Now that we have covered all the topics in ANOVA and have understood how it is used in a real-world example, let's see how we can run an ANOVA test in Excel. Suppose you are a research scientist and you want to perform clinical trials to study the effectiveness of three drugs developed by three healthcare companies to cure a certain disease. The data below represents the time taken to cure the disease for different patients when they consume either drug A, B or C. The time is represented in terms of total hours and minutes. At the 0.05 level of significance, that is the alpha value, we need to test whether the mean time for the three drugs to cure the disease are equal. So how we can do that? We'll first move on to the data tab and then click data analysis. We'll select the ANOVA single factor and click OK. And it is asking for an input range. Select the data you have on the table. We have the labels in our first row and the alpha is 0 0.05. For the output range, we'll get the output here on the same page. So we'll select some cell in the same page and we'll click OK. So you can see we have our analysis of variance table with the summary. Let's understand each term one by one. The average time taken to cure the disease after consumption of three drugs are 107, 90 and 96 hours approximately. The difference between the largest and the smallest mean is 17.47. Here one significant observation is that the F value is greater than F critical value. So, this means we can reject the null hypothesis. It also means that the average time taken to cure the disease is not the same for all the three drugs. Using the paired comparison, we can conclude that the time taken by the drug A to cure the disease is more than time taken by drug C and wait further is more time taken by drug B to cure the disease. That's all about the ANOVA. I hope after this video, we'll have a clear understanding of what the ANOVA is and what is the concept behind it? If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thank you and keep learning. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.